According to the U.S. Department of Energy, the demand for electricity in the United States alone will rise by a whopping 40 percent by 2032. Now, the resulting increase in carbon emissions will pose economic and environmental threats. Fortunately, one company seems to have come up with an innovative way to produce this much-needed power with help of the sun. John Coughlin is president of Solar Window Technologies, where a first-ever electricity-generating product is about to transform the world's windows into powerful conductors that generate electricity 50 times more efficiently than rooftop solar panels. Harnessing the sun's power using the existing surfaces of structures, we may soon see a time where skyscrapers and residential high-rises offset their power needs by simply generating their own and even banking energy. Joining us now from New York to tell us more about this new twist on solar energy is John Coughlin. John, welcome to Full Frame. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Well, John, this is really, really actually very exciting stuff. The technology is pretty amazing. Tell me first how your technology differs from traditional solar panels. Well, Solar Window Technologies is a clean energy company. Think of taking a piece of glass, generating electricity on that glass, and putting that electricity generating glass on tall towers and skyscrapers to offset meaningful energy that those buildings demand. That's what we do. Okay. Well, all right. There's one terminology uh, that is sort of very scientific, so I need to ask you to explain what this means. It's, uh, it's called photo, photovoltaic. Is that correct? Tell yes, me in layman's terms what that means, because that's an integral part of this technology, right? Yes, it is. Uh, photovoltaic really has two root words, photo meaning light and voltaic meaning electricity. So what we do is we take light energy and generate electricity on solar window. Okay. Now, you say that your technology is 50% more powerful than the normal solar panel technology. Why is that? How does it actually work? Acres of glass is the best way to look at it. When we're looking at a tall tower or skyscraper, we're looking at all sides of that building and for example, a 50-story building has nearly six acres of glass. So when we look at putting solar window on six acres of glass versus the really tiny footprint on the roof for PV or solar panels, then we have a tremendous ability to generate energy for that building. But more importantly, six acres of glass is a lot easier to put solar window on than taking up the valuable six acres of land right. that in most cities like new york would be very difficult so if you can imagine one 50-story building taking up six acres of land of central park it wouldn't take very long for a few skyscrapers to use up all that beautiful space right so we're using all that acres of glass we're not using all the acres of land no you're right john i mean it would be impossible to do this in a big city because there would be no space for it. So the idea of using existing structures, that's what's so phenomenal, phenomenal to me. Now, tell me if I'm right about this. The flat glass industry overall is $100 billion. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So we're talking about a huge industry already that covers all of these skyscrapers around the world. And so if we should do that in the U.S. alone, I mean, what are we talking about here? What, what kind of business are we talking about here? The market potential is huge. Not only is it a $100 billion business, in the United States alone, there's over 400 million square feet of glass in commercial buildings. And that's also in taking into consideration the over 5 million commercial buildings in the United States alone. So when we look at the ability of one single 50-story building to offset meaningful energy for a building that currently doesn't have an option to do so. Right. Think of all those five million buildings that will have an option to, to generate their own electricity. I'm wondering, John, why hasn't anyone thought of this, this before? Because, I mean, obviously, I would have never thought of this, and the average person would have never thought of this, but it's pretty amazing. You know, everybody thought about just rooftop, but the fact that you came up with this concept of, of covering an entire building. Yeah, and, and really, solar window is a technology that's being developed for windows. We're not a technology that's being developed for some other application 
and then as an afterthought, let's try to put it on window glass. Since its inception, the whole concept has been tall towers and skyscrapers, utilizing that vast space. But more importantly, when we look at those buildings, we want to be able to maintain the beauty of a window right. while making it architecturally pleasing, which has comes in our colors. Those colors have tints that we can increase, make them darker, more transparency. That way that gives us the ability to put this on a skyscraper and maintain the architectural beauty that the uh, architects and the building developers and owners are heavily sought after. And that, John, actually, I think is really crucial, isn't it, for this to work. Oftentimes in the past, solar panels, people complained about them because they weren't aesthetically pleasing. They didn't look very good on a rooftop house, so people chose not to go with that. In this case, when I was watching some of the video, you can't even tell that these, this glass is on the building, right? That's key. Transparency is an important factor. Just imagine sitting in your office, looking out the window at that beautiful cityscape, and just thinking of that window as that's the ordinary window that you've known all your life. It's a passive window. But now we're taking that passive window and making it generate electricity. And you, you can't see the electricity being generated, but you still maintain that beauty. And now that window is active, producing power for your office fixtures, for building fixtures and other uh, fu functions in the building. Right, right. God, that, that's what I think is, is amazing about this uh, technology. But let's talk about cost, John, because as mm -hmm. I mentioned before, solar panels in the past, one of the other deterrents was that they were expensive and they wouldn't get their payback in something like five to seven years. What about your technology? What's, what's the investment and then what's the payback? Right. Based on our um, proprietary power and financial modeling, using data that we've received for testing our modules at the United States Department of Energy, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, we took the power from those tests, modeled it in our proprietary model, and we show less than a one-year financial payback on a 50-story building. And the beauty of that is it's not just that economic incentive. It's got to go beyond that. First is it's manufacturability, easy to manufacture. So it's liquid. The other aspect of this is the cost. We need to keep the cost in such a line that it allows this to go to those tall towers and skyscrapers. And but more importantly, okay. it's the, also the environmental benefit. We're looking at 15 times the environmental benefit when compared to those same solar panels on that building, which is huge considering the importance of us controlling greenhouse gas emissions. Well, I was just going to ask you about that because let me just throw out some figures for you. 70% of all electricity relies on fossil fuels and 85% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions come from those fossil fuels. So what kind of savings are we talking about when it comes to using uh, your technology versus you know, traditional utilities? That offset is tremendous and extremely important. When we're looking at greenhouse gas emissions, we can open this up a little bit, talk about carbon footprint. We can talk about the economic incentives. But when we look at it, for example, that 50-story building has the potential to offset 2.2 million miles of vehicle emissions. That's a huge number. When we look at that small rooftop space where that PV is up on that small rooftop, that's the equivalent of about 176,000 miles. So 2.2 mile, million miles from a vehicle is tremendous when looking at one single skyscraper. That's one building. So that is incredible if you multiply that by hundreds. Um, here's a question. What about China? Uh, you know, we all know that China has a huge greenhouse gas, gas emissions problem. The pollution is reaching crisis levels over there. Uh, so is this something that you'd like to introduce to China? Because, again, also, there's tremendous number of skyscrapers in China all over that country and they continue to build more. The potential could be huge over there, right? Our market strategy is global. Um, we feel that this technology can be put in geographic locations to help a world cause of controlling greenhouse gas emissions, ultimately affecting climate and climate change. So as we look at this technology, 
we see this as a global application having a positive, favorable impact on greenhouse gas emissions. And John, I, I should ask you, is this already being used or is this still being introduced uh, to various developers just to see what the reaction is at this point? Yeah, our launch is next year. So we're looking at uh, the end of next year, uh, and this launch is predicated on a couple very important prerequisites. First is some important strategic industrial partners. That's key to us. They've got the ability to hit those global markets. Second is raising additional capital. Uh, we are in the process of raising capital uh, and as this interview is being conducted. But more importantly, to bring it back into perspectives, there's people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk of Tesla. We are in great company of some of the world's most energy advocates and innovators. We're using some of the brightest minds in the development of our technology and some of the most creative minds in finance to help capitalize this technology, ultimately to build solar window, which may be perhaps one of the greatest single innovations in, in clean energy history. I don't think that's an understatement, John, because of what I've seen and what I've heard from you. So I bet the response from others has been the same, excitement, uh, thrilled that this is uh, being introduced. Oh, the, the excitement has been tremendous. And this is not just from the architects, building owners and developers perspective. The, the excitement goes into the glass industry. Keep in mind that this is one of the greatest innovations to the glass industry in over half a century. Mm. So the glass industry has just looked at this as fantastic. But we also need to look at it from the perspective of the chemical industry. Our technology is chemistry. It's chemistry in the making, chemistry making electricity. So there are many industries that have brought this with great excitement, and we're excited to be innovating. And do you think, John, that this is going to change the world in terms of the way people build, but also, more importantly, the environment? Well, we certainly hope so. We have put tremendous effort into solar window. We have tremendous outreach. We truly enjoy working with some of our strategic partners and some of our discussions. And all of that is the planning for a clean energy technology like Solar Window on a global outreach to help in a global perspective. Well, John, it was a pleasure talking to you and hearing all about your uh, company and the technology. It's pretty amazing stuff. So congratulations to you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with a look at a raging debate about sustainability solutions in our food supply.